So we basically uh, have automated the whole process of setting up uh, redundant tunnels to Azure, a virtual WAN. And so the whole goal of this exercise is to connect the SD-WAN branches uh, to the virtual nets that are existing in, in your Azure network, right? So if you go from right to left, it uh, looks complex, but it's actually quite easy. Uh, on the left, you have your branch network. You have one edge device that is connecting to two gateways, a primary gateway at the top and a secondary gateway at the bottom. You have your Velo Cloud Orchestrator. I'm going to, of course, show you everything's going to be done from the orchestrator itself. The orchestrator is going to make the API calls to Azure uh, Virtual WAN. Now, we already have a Virtual WAN created in Azure. We also have a Azure Virtual Hub created, uh, and we have two VNets created. VNets, again, have virtual machines in them. Uh, the VNets are also attached to the Virtual Hub. Right? So if you're familiar with the virtual WAN concepts, it's, it's a relatively new concept from, from Microsoft Azure. But the whole concept is that it acts as a replacement for uh, the whole uh, uh, similar to transit VPC in Amazon, right? So you don't need a VNet which acts as like a central point where you can connect everything. Now the Azure Virtual Hub becomes the core of your network. Your VNets connect into your Azure Virtual Hub. Your express route connections, again, as uh, I think Ed was mentioning, they are going to connect into your uh, hub as well, right? So your VPN gateways will connect into your hub. So the hub becomes the core of your network, right? Now, what we are automating here is the whole process of setting up redundant tunnels. So if you see redundant gateways, each gateway is going to have a primary and a secondary VPN tunnel to the Azure hub. So a total of four tunnels will be automated. So we'll automate the setting up of these tunnels. Uh, we'll automate the setting up of VT VPN sites on the Azure. Uh, then we will download the config. We'll actually attach these VPN sites to the hub also. And I'll show you step by step as things happen. Right? And finally, we'll sync up the configuration. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. Sorry, before you go on to the demo, uh, is there an option to have the same architecture with a multi-region deployment? So if you have different geographies, yeah, sure, um, sure. And, and what's the mechanism to get to the closest VPN gateway? So great, great question. Uh, I, I'm assuming that you meant Azure regions. Yes. Right, okay. Now, the hub is a regional resource. That's a limitation from Azure. So which means in one region, you can only have one hub, right? That's per VVAN. So right now, this hub that I created is in US West, right? So if you have, let's say, a hub in US East, uh, you can connect it to the same virtual WAN, mm -hmm. right? But in one region, there can only be one hub. Sure. So right now, Azure has not enabled hub-to-hub -hub connections, right? So inter-region hub-to-hub connections are not enabled. That's something in their roadmap. But if I want to connect to two <coughs> regions from my branch, then your gateways can figure out that. Yeah, you can do that I'm easily. You need two connections, one so, to west, one to east. Exactly. I will show you right now in the demo. Yeah, so that will be routing based, right? So we will advertise the routes, uh, the gateways will know that, and then uh, any edge that needs to access resources in that VNet will build an overlay to the appropriate gateway. Yeah, they just, they don't have the same services as AWS with the transit gateway capable. Mm -hmm. Not yet, no, correct, yes. Oh, the, another question here. Are some of those features are available in the preview? I think it's in the Azure roadmap discussion. Oh, I, I don't know, for example, in the V-Edge, I can use a, a different VRF, for example, in order to, to make a, a different uh, uh, okay. segmentation. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's let, possible or? I will answer your question in the demo, if okay. that's OK. OK, right? great. I'll actually show it to you. Good. So let's, let's go through the prerequisites, right? So on the Azure side, we have the uh, Azure VRAN created. Uh, we currently have. No VPN sites. We have one hub. You can see the one hub is there. It's in West US 2. We have two virtual network connections. 
So there's two VNets that are connected that are already attached to this hub. So that's a base level setup that you would need, right? Now on the orchestrator, uh, we have a customer defined. Okay, so we have a customer defined. The customer is called ECME01. We have an online branch in that customer. So we'll go ahead and start the process. So we'll go to network services. We'll choose a non relocloud cloud site. That's just the terminology we use to, for setting up an V1 or V2-based tunnel to anywhere, which is not a Velo cloud site. So let's name it something. Okay. We will choose Microsoft as your virtual hub. Okay, at this point, you will choose your subscription. So the one step that I, uh, I should have shown you, and maybe I can show you here, is that we already have a service principle created within Azure. The service principle has the right roles associated with it, which means all we have to do is we have to create an IAS subscription on our side, which has the Active Directory tenant ID, the application ID, the API key. So we are authenticating to the service principle. The service principle is acting on our behalf. So at this point of time, we're ready to call all the Azure VVAN APIs that we want to. Okay, so let's go back to the non relocal cloud sites. Okay, so we'll choose Microsoft as your virtual hub. We'll choose the subscription. And here we get a choice of the virtual WANs that we want to peer with. So, I mean, I happen to know that I want to use the Acme VWAN 01, right? I also, now within that VWAN, there could be multiple hubs. Most likely there will be multiple hubs. Now this hub, I only have one hub. It pertains to the West US2 region, right? You can see that the West US2 comes in after you choose the hub. So if you want it to peer to a different region, you'll just choose a hub in that region. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but you can use a different virtual one there. You can use a different hub? No, vir virtual one. Yeah, yeah, I can use a different virtual WAN as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that is a segment basically within yeah, yeah. Azure exactly. structure. Right, Correct. perfect. So I can use a different VWAN, I can use a different hub within the same VWAN, so I can connect to any region, Azure region that I choose to. Okay. I'll just enable the tunnels. Okay, now this process here is starting the automation. Okay. As you will see, the VPN sites are coming up. There are two VPN sites already, and it's updating. So the first thing is it'll create those two VPN sites, which are the VPN gateways that connect into the Azure hub. So that service principle is giving full access into Azure to automate all of this. Are right. you guys using like Azure Resource Manager to get that done, or are you using Azure Automation, or which portion? Uh, so we're just using normal REST APIs, REST so API. Azure VBAN APIs, okay. right? The service principle, what I did on the service principle is I gave it owner level permissions on the subscription level, so everything's wide open. Oh, okay. You guys have a tighter lockdown on that? Because most of the time they don't you you can't. allow a third party. It's something you do on the Azure yeah. side, right? right? So you lock right. down that role, and then uh, it automatically like enforces that role once you make the API calls. Okay. Right. Okay, so now the VPN gateways have already been created. They have also been attached to the hub. You can see that there's two VPN sites on the hub. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and monitor. Uh, there's one step we need to do on our side and the workflow is still not complete. Okay, there it goes. So it is synchronized to VPN config, which means it has created the gateways, attached them to the hub, downloaded the remote site configuration from Azure, input that remote configuration into the VCO database and synchronized everything, right? So everything's ready to go. We just need to add one small, make one small change in the profile. We're gonna say, okay, use this tunnel for cloud VPN. Yeah, okay. the reason we do that is uh if no edge is going to be using the tunnel, then we don't necessarily need to enable that. So it's only uh, by the step where you assign that to a profile means that it will be assigned to a certain number of edges, then they will start to enable the tunnel to, uh, to use.
Okay, this does take uh, a minute or two for the tunnel to come up. We see the routing. Excuse me? We see the routing. This should do, it should do a change in your routing. Uh, the routing I'll explain right after the tunnel gets set up. So maybe okay. in the interest of uh, time, we uh, yep. think we're uh, running so, quite a bit over. Uh, yep. We'll uh, just uh, break at uh, the tunnel setup so you see that the tunnels are established. And then uh, we'll do a quick break uh, before we dive into the NSXT sessions. Uh, so the routing, I'll uh, explain to you how that works. So yeah, the tunnel is now set up. Okay, all the, all the VDETs that were connected to the hub appear as connected subnets. So there are already uh, the VeloCloud orchestrator already knows about all the VNets because the peer is connected subnets, they automatically come in. Okay. For the branch site routes to be injected into Azure, there is an API call that we're calling and we inject those routes into Azure. That's you it. do that dynamically. So as we do that dynamically as part of the workflow. Right. So once the tunnel gets set up, uh, the routing is in place, uh, we have full connectivity from branches to VNets. Okay, the tunnel is established on, from our side. It's just uh, the, gra the GUI takes a little while to just uh, update this. And this, is, well, this was scenario one. So this is not using your vEdge inside of Azure, right? This, this is setting up yes, IPsec tunnels that is to correct. different- From the Azure gateway. Automating right. the IPsec tunnel connections to uh, the Azure uh, virtual right. one in that case, yes. All right, so while the tunnels are coming up, I'll start wrapping up, I guess, so that we can uh, give the baton to the NSXT. So uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining the session today. It was great uh, to give an update on how the SD-WAN service is evolving uh, over time. Uh, we do uh, have a book uh, that uh, we can uh, give to you as well. So if you want to have like a little bit more deeper insight into the various use cases, uh, we do have uh, a book that we written uh, a couple of months ago, and that is uh, a good insight into how uh, SD-WAN is deployable in like a retail environment versus a healthcare environment as well.